most of us eat every day, some of us too much, because yesterday's food is not enough to supply energy for today's needs. Why then do some of us expect yesterday's portion of heavenly manna, the Word of God, to keep us through today's challenges? On this program, we are going to change all of that. Let's experience God's words today and receive the power we need to live healthy, vibrant lives. Welcome to your daily portion with your host, author, speaker, L. David Harris. It is Tuesday, April 30, 2019. Hello, my name is L. David Harris. I am your host, and this is your daily portion, where we give you God's word in just 10 minutes or your money back. And I'm delighted to be able to share with you one more day. It is a new day. God has been good to us. I'm thankful that you are joining us. Please let me welcome those joining us for the very first time. Hopefully, if you uh, enjoy yourself today and learn something, you'll invite someone else. It's one of those simple things. All you have to do is click the share button. Uh, if you're listening or you're viewing, there are ways to share and please do so. If you're viewing, please use that uh, new feature called Watch Party and give your watch party a title so people will know exactly what you are sharing at the given time and they can watch along with you. And uh, for those of you who join us every single day, thank you for your dedication. I appreciate you. I know some of you are sharing and I see it. And now I can see the numbers of persons who are now watching. And if you happen to be typing in the feed, I can now actually see that too, where before I would not have been able to see a composite of all of the different sites. But now I have an aggregation tool that lets me see it. And for those who are listening, thank you for your dedication. Please, if you're listening on radio, web radio, through an app, or on some podcasting aggregator site, please find a creative way of sharing as well. Let's go ahead and pray and get underway. Father, thank you for giving us this privilege of opening your word. Now, please give us your balance and your wisdom while we understand the truth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen again. Let me ask you a question. Today's topic is correction with love, as I've mentioned before. Let me ask you a question. Does God correct his children? Yes or yes? Mm -hmm. That's an easy answer. Does the correction sometimes uh, bring about a little bit of pain? Yes or yes, or even more than a little bit of pain, depending on how disrespectful we have been toward him and his laws? Well, the answer is yes again. And so the issue here is not whether it'll be uncomfortable or difficult for us if we are corrected, right? In the same way, it is not a matter of whether it'll be difficult or even somewhat painful to a child who is also being corrected. But let me ask you another question. When God does this correction, whichever method he chooses, does he do so in a manner that is redemptive in nature? Does the same hand of correction that he uses Whatever way he chooses, is that the same hand that he enfolds you into his love? And of course, the answer is absolutely yes. And so he is our example about correction. Sometimes God allowed those, uh, his people, to be in uh, different circumstances with, with heathen nations. But the Babylonians and others, because God's people, for whatever reason, seem to have bumped their heads many times and lost their loving mind. And for whatever reason, it was necessary for them to be in those circumstances because God would use those nations as rods of correction. But he would tell those nations, if you go too far, remember, these are my people. Don't do it. Okay. He also said, uh, those whom I love, I rebuke and chasten. And if I did not do it, you would be like a fatherless child. Okay, so let's come back to the lesson at hand. It's about our children. The question is, what does Proverbs teach us about the importance of discipline and correction of a child? And the Bible reads in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 17, he that is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuseth reproof erreth. And so if a person, a child in this case, refuses to hear the counsel that parents are giving, we're talking about parents who love the Lord or parents who understand that you're not supposed to be disrespectful, cause your child to wrath or to uh, mete out unholy punishments, then the child is 
erring because why would you turn away from the counsel of, of parents who are following the counsel of God? Verily then, a child is turning their backs on God. And we don't need that now, do we? We want our children to be saved. So we're training our children who are going astray. We're training them like tender plants to come into the right path. Okay. Proverbs chapter 23, verses 13 and 14 may be startling to some, but we're going to read it anyway. Withhold not correction from the child. So that's a positive word, correction. If something is wrong or in error, you correct it. All right. Without withhold not correction from the child. If you do so, you are giving that, doing a child disservice. For if thou beatest him with a rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. Now, understand that the text is saying exactly what it means. The language may be a little bit strong considering our modern way of speaking. So you wouldn't say beating because that bespeaks something beyond just physical correction, right? But you would say something like spanking. And I know many of you are allergic to the term spanking even. But the Bible is teaching us here that if you spank your child, he or she shall not die. You will deliver that child's soul from hell. Now, understand that not every child requires that kind of punishment. So it is understood that only the appropriate punishment or correction or whatever it is for that particular thing that the child is going through as needed. So, for instance, I have been trained in, in variable interval schedules of, 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 you know, things that have to do with behavior modification. Well, some children are not very receptive to that kind of model. Some people think it's cycle babble, but whatever the case, there are different things that I have done professionally for work to change or to modify different kinds of behavior depending on with whoever I'm dealing with, right? And so each of those methods, whatever they happen to be, including if you have to actually lay hands on a child, must be corrective, must be godly, must be loving, must be redemptive. Redemptive is key because there are persons who are abusive. They use the intensity and the uh, frequency that define, is defined as abuse. So that is key. I won't go into the details of that because I'm sure there are plenty of arguments that are waiting to happen at this right at this very moment. But the Bible says exactly what it means. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 1, he that is being often reproved hardeneth his neck. So if a child needs to be reproved often, I said needs to be, not that the parent has lost his or her mind, but that the child actually needs it often, that's because the child is hardened his neck. That means that the child is stubborn. Uh, it shall suddenly, the child shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. So we are trying to deliver our children from the, the wrong side of the law. We're trying to deliver our children from the wrong side of the law of God. We are trying to deliver them so that they can honor their parents, do what they have been called to do, live holy lives overall and be saved. But if a child refuses to be reproved, and fights back and turns their back and hardens themselves against reproof, then that child is going down the wrong path. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 15, the Bible reads, the rod and reproof give wisdom. Two different things. Reproof is not physical. The rod is physical at times. Uh, the psalm, psalmist said, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So that physical rod of, of, of correction gets us into the right path. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. I think that is self-explanatory. One thing that the lesson writer outlines at the end of the lesson, which I agree with, is the child's feeling of being loved by his or her parents is vital if discipline is to have its desired effect of being corrective and get this big word and redemptive, according to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. And so the love that we must have for our children will also be equaled with the kind of correction, discipline, or reproof that is necessary to keep him or her on the right path. Pray up, ask God how to do it well, and we'll see you tomorrow, Lord Sparing Life. Peace. Thanks for joining us, listening friends. Always remember, we cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. 
This has been your daily portion with L. David Harris. Make it a great day.